Well, I'm glad there's some people in the room. <laughs> Not everyone has gone to uh, see Alan's talk, which I'm sure is going to be great as well. Um, so um, I uh, wrote this presentation during my uh, fugue jet lag state last night, so I hope, I hope this all makes sense. We'll, we'll see. Um, so my first question is, why is GNOME Web a thing? Why do, why, why do, why do we have our own web browser for GNOME? Um, so this is actually not even the, not even the right question because uh, I, I, well, I mean, the, the answer to this question is, well, there was a time before Firefox. Uh, technically, Firefox predates GNOME Web by a, a few months. But uh, GNOME Web is actually a fork of an older GNOME Web browser that predates Firefox. So, so it's, not, it's not a good question, uh, because this is a question from 20 years ago. Um, the, the right question is, why is GNOME Web still a thing? Why are we still maintaining this web browser when we have Firefox, when we have Chrome? Uh, oh, by, by the way, Mozilla and Google are giving us money, so I have to thank them here. <laughs> thank you, Google. Thank you, Mozilla. Uh, but, but yeah, we're competing with them on, uh, on, our, on our web browser. Why are we doing that? These browsers are, oh, I don't have a slide for this. Oh, I do have a slide for this. Oh, I wrote this slide when I was in a fugue state, and I forgot I wrote this slide, but whatever. OK. Uh, so yeah, we can't compete with Firefox and Chrome in terms of website compatibility, and we'll never be able to compete with them in terms of website compatibility, because GNOME Web doesn't exist on Windows. It's not a popular web browser. Website developers don't test against it, right? Uh, the best we can do is hope the website developers test their websites in Safari. Uh, since uh, GNOME Web and Safari are very, very similar, it's the same web engine under the hood, the platform-specific bug, which is uh, the main source of website incompatibility issues. But um, most websites that are broken in GNOME Web, about half of them are also broken in Safari. Uh, so if the website developers aren't testing their websites in Safari, of course they're not going to be testing in little GNOME Web on Linux. No one cares about it. Website developers don't care about Linux, right? So we can't compete on website compatibility. We'll never be able to compete there. Uh, so, 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 so why has a web browser at all? Well, there's four reasons. Um, reason number one is desktop integration. Reason number two is the, our little cache space, simple, clean, beautiful. I'll go over all of these. I have more slides all of these later in the talk. Good stuff built in. Yeah, that's like a marketing slogan, right? Uh, I rest assured there's good stuff filled in. And, and, and most importantly, uh, because we can, what has ever stopped the GNOME community from building software in the past? We have a web browser. It works. It can display web pages. Isn't that, I mean, wow, right? Uh, our, our own uh, HTML rendering engine. Uh, and it's not just, it's not just, uh, it's not just for uh, the web browser. Um, let's see. If you do, if, I mean, we use WebKit all over the stack. We use it for GNOME Online accounts. We use it for, oh, no, it's not letting me sign in. We use it for, uh, uh, not Polari, we use it, Empathy uses it for the Empathy chat window. Um, what else is there? Oh, Geary for displaying uh, web messages. So um, uh, for email messages, HTML email messages. So. WebKit, GDK, our, our uh, rendering engine is used throughout the stack, so it's not just important for the web browser. Uh, but, I mean, we're doing all that work to make these other programs work. Why not have the web browser as well? Uh, because we can. Okay. Uh, desktop integration. Uh, first of all, let's be clear. Uh, Epiphany, Dome Web, Epiphany is a code name for the project. Uh, so I'm, I'm going to use those words interchangeably throughout my speech, but um, we're, we're trying to brand it as GNOME Web, so that's the only thing you'll see in the user interface. Uh, as far as I'm aware, uh, well, Epiphany is the largest, um, most popular GDK3, uh, native GDK3 based web browser. Um, uh, if, you, if you open up Firefox or Chrome, they look different than the other applications on your desktop, right? Uh, they have their own custom widget toolkits. Um, Chrome uses GDK3, but only take out colors to display with its own uh, custom complicated uh, widget toolkit. Uh, Firefox actually uh, uses GDK a bit more intensively. It, uh, it uses uh, the, what's called the foreign drawing API in order to make draw stuff that looks like GDK widgets, even though it's not. And it's, it's, uh, 
manual and hacky. Uh, it, it doesn't really turn out very well. Uh, it, it, it works, but um, it, it, it's certainly not a native GDK3 uh, field to your web browser. And so it has that. Uh, Epiphany has that. Um, and, and I think that's valuable. Uh, uh, can you imagine uh, buying, going to the store, buying a Mac, and it comes with Chrome pre-installed? Of course not, because Apple and Google compete. But, but could you imagine if Safari had the user interface of Chrome? It just, if it felt completely out of place in your desktop? Of course not, because in Apple land, products are integrated. Uh, everything works well together. Uh, and that's what we strive for in the GNOME community as well. And we have that epiphany. Uh, does that, um, but also um, not, not just it's not just um, having an integrated user interface. We can also do some cool things to integrate with the Chrome Desktop that other web browsers can't. For instance, our native uh, web app support. Have, if if you ever have a particular website that you use as if it were a desktop application, you just go in and you save as webcap web app, and it works. Um, let's see. Do I have? Uh, so this isn't my main computer, so I don't have one installed now. So um, unfortunately, I can't demo it, uh, or I could, but I have to open up the web browser and make a web app. And, uh, goodness gracious, I don't have time for that in this um, short little talk. Uh, but, um, but it works pretty well. Um, so that's cool. Uh, who recognizes the importance of desktop integration? This is a big elementary OS logo. Um, it's not centered because I don't know how to center images in Pandoc. So, <laughs> people who make presentation templates, I've been doing this for years, all the images are off on the left. I can't resize those either, that's a pain. Uh, anyway, uh, yeah, uh, so what are the big elementary OS logo in, on, the, on the slide? And, and, and this is getting to the, the, the purpose, the real purpose behind my talk today. The GNOME web browser is starting to feel less like the GNOME web browser and more like the elementary OS browser. Chrome Web is now the default browser in elementary OS because they have a hard requirement that all, all applications installed by default must be GTK3 native applications. So Chrome and Firefox are not even considered. Uh, and, and so they've, they've, they used to use Midori. They've, they've picked Epiphany to be their new main web browser installed by default. And, and, and so we don't, we don't have user tracking but there's no data to tell us how many GNOME web users are using elementary OS and how many are using GNOME. But I have a suspicion that the majority of our users are not using GNOME at all. I have a suspicion that they're using elementary simply because uh, elementary is the only operating system where Epiphany is installed by default. Uh, the only major operating system. I'm not aware of any GNOME operating systems that come with Epiphany. They all choose Firefox for better website compatibility. So that's a shame. Um, so. Uh, I'll talk a little more about that uh, later uh, because my feud state slides are a little disorganized. Um, so the, the next slide I've got here is simple, clean, beautiful. Yeah, that's a marketing catchphrase. Uh, but, but for real, have, have you ever, I, I know we're Linux people here, but have you ever seen someone using a Mac or a Windows PC? Have you seen the Safari web browser? It looks pretty nice, right? Have you seen Microsoft Edge? Goodness gracious, that is a nice web browser. I know people think, oh, it's Internet Explorer Take Two. No one likes Internet Explorer. It's not cool, right? It's actually really good. Um, proprietary software, yes. But it's, <laughs> it's great. Um, so, uh, can you seriously say that about Firefox or Chrome? These are web browsers, Firefox and Chrome. The cross -plus, here's, a, here's a distinction. Microsoft Edge only runs on Windows. Safari only runs on Mac OS. Microsoft and Apple put a lot of effort into making those uh, browsers work well on their platforms, making sure they have nice, pretty user interfaces that look similar to other Windows apps. OK, yeah, Windows doesn't really have a theme, but uh, Mac OS really does. Uh, Safari looks similar to other Mac OS apps. It's nice. Firefox and Chrome, on the other hand, there's, there's no platform for them to integrate with because they're cross-platform. They have to work well everywhere. They have to work about the same, look about the same everywhere because otherwise it becomes unmaintainable. It becomes an unmaintainable mess to have a web browser work well on, well, on to have multiple versions of your user interface. So they pick one version that works decently well everywhere, but it doesn't look excellent anywhere in particular. 
In fact, uh, they look best on Windows, in my opinion. They look sort of out of place in GNOME, OS X, uh, Mac OS. Uh, so, um, Epiphany uh, has like a, I don't have any screenshots of Epiphany. Here's Epiphany, uh, without internet access, okay. Uh, so you can see the websites I visit in the last um, uh, uh, 10 days or what, whatever. Uh, full screen this, open up a web page, okay, that's a, okay. So this demo is going very badly because I didn't practice it, apologies. Uh, it looks good, right? One uh, single bar at the top, we've got the, um, this is why you have to practice your speech in advance because I'm just rambling. Uh, <laughs> uh, but by the way, did he mention that I'm the backup presenter? I didn't know that I was going to be here. Uh, <laughs> oh well. Um, let's get back to the slides. Okay, uh, good stuff built in. Here's one, here is something where we can really compete with uh, um, the cross-platform browsers. Uh, Google and Mozilla are really restricted in the features that they can enable by default in their web browser. And, I mean, that might be a surprising statement, but think about it. Google's an advertising company. It has to focus on what makes the advertising platform for the web better. That's why Chrome exists, it's so that they can secure their revenue base. Google controls, I mean, over half of uh, web browser users use Google Chrome. They have a nice, secure base for um, the, the, um, advertising. Mozilla gets a lot of money. Mozilla is terrified about losing market share, so they need to keep website developers happy keep them promoting Firefox. They don't want negative publicity. They're very limited in, the, um, in what features they can enable by default. That's why you don't have an ad blocker enabled by default in Firefox, like you do in Epiphany. We have easy privacy subscription blacklist enabled by default. We need to do, m that's just the bare minimum of what was easy to implement and get working in Epiphany. We need to do much better than that. We can do much better than that. Um, but of course, the next slide is not what we, the, the, so the proper transition here would be to move from that statement into future work, but because my slides are disorganized, the next statement is what we've done in the past. Okay, all right. Uh, so let, let's back up, let's, uh, I was totally transitioning into some talk about our uh, past accomplishments. Okay, uh, whoa, that's a lot of text for one slide. Um, like I said, I, I came up with these slides uh, jet lagged last night, so forgive me for the just disorganized uh, order here. Um, we accomplished a lot in the past um, year. Uh, new features in Epiphany 3.4. Uh, we now have a much nicer um, menu. Um, I can demo that. That's easy to demo. Come on. It's a hamburger menu. It's a popover. Thank you, Julian, stand, uh, wave, wave. Uh, we developed that, thank you. Um, the bookmarks code rewritten from scratch has a nice new user interface. I hope I don't have any embarrassing bookmarks here. Oh, I don't. Okay, great. So, I mean, yay, lovely, right? I mean, this is so much nicer than uh, uh, the old broken user interface we used to have. People would complain that the clicking doesn't work on <laughs> clicking on the, uh, venue items, that, that broke in some GK310 or whatever, and uh, well, we've got that working again now, it's much nicer. Uh, he made some major improvements to the code that I can't demo because they're just code improvements, but that's helped a lot for maintainability. Uh, we've got this new tab switcher menu. Some people complain that the GDK notebook is kind of terrible for actually switching between tabs. You can only see three or four at a time, okay, five. A few at a time, uh, you can't see as many as in Chrome. They don't shrink uh, when you have lots of tabs open. Okay, well it turns out that if we just add a menu to let you switch between different tabs, wow. Uh, okay, it, I mean it's a bad demo because I don't have internet connection, but 
that now you can ha now we can handle a huge amount of tabs very easily, and you just scroll down. It turns out Firefox has this menu already. It's just sort of hidden. Uh, people don't use it as much. It's not as important in Firefox because it shows you more. If the tabs shrink, you can see more tabs by default. Uh, Chrome doesn't have this. Chrome doesn't have this at all. So actually, uh, tab management is actually, if you have a huge number of tabs, it's actually easier now in Epiphany than it is in Chrome. So that's cool. And that was easy to add to. That only took me an hour or two to hack together. Um, easy privacy tracking protection is now enabled by default. Um, uh, we need to do better. Uh, I'll talk more about that in a bit. But it, I mean, that's good. Um, it seems to not break websites. That's good. Um, the address bar is now always visible. Yeah, so we had complaints that users couldn't figure out how to enter a web address. So uh, that, that's, that's, not, that's not a good problem for your web browser to have, by the way, uh, not being able to uh, visit websites. OK, so we fixed that. Um, uh, oh, we have a new warning. If you, uh, uh, if, uh, you uh, focus a password form on an insecure website, we'll, we'll display a warning. Hey, your password's going to be visible to cyber criminals. OK, that's cool. Um, Improve the ability to protect certain password forms. If you use Epiphany a lot, you would get annoyed because um, the, the password form saving feature doesn't always notice when you're entering a password form. So we, we find more f password forms now. That's good. Uh, we have new search engine preferences. That's great. So what have we accomplished in the last cycle? Uh, Firefox sync support, Gabriel, uh, Wave. Uh, w so this is going to make it nice and easy to transition from Firefox. Full support for syncing your bookmarks, history, passwords, open tabs with Firefox. Uh, I, I feel like the code's fragile and it's going to break the next time Mozilla changes the Firefox sync implementation, but it works today. So that's good. Um, um, uh, and, uh, so I, we have to thank Mozilla again for allowing us to use, they have a very permissive licensing terms for using actually not just uh, Firefox sync open source code, but actually storing the data on their actual Firefox sync servers. So um, that's cool. We just have to, we have little warnings in the application. Epiphany is not Firefox. And, and that's, all, that's all they request. So uh, thanks very much, Mozilla. Um, OK, yeah, that's only, that's, that's only one thing. So feature development, obviously, um, the list of accomplishments looks quite a bit different uh, from the last release cycle to this release cycle. Now, now this is all new stuff to Flash Black, uh, but uh, certainly uh, the work was front-loaded. Um, so so, so what, why is there that big difference? Um, and the reason we have that big difference is in how much we accomplished last cycle, how much we accomplished this cycle is, uh, well, uh, uh, we don't really have any full-time staff working on maintaining Epiphany. It's, it's, it's volunteer-driven for the most part. Um, so uh, I contribute a small amount uh, to, to fixing up small things, uh, fixing bugs as they appear. Uh, but it's not, it's not like uh, uh, my pay job. Uh, I work for Egalia. Uh, we're down here. And we make lots of money off of WebKit. Uh, so we maintain the web backend uh, that's used in Epiphany. And I think we do a pretty good job at that. Uh, we have a bigger team than ever. Um, lots of very experienced people um, fixing uh, issues. And yeah, we still got plenty of issues, but we're getting them fixed. And so I'm very pleased with how we're doing there. So we, uh, we, uh, that, uh, we're sustaining ourselves quite well that way. We don't need, I mean, it's always great to have more assistance on an open source project, but I think WebKit is very well maintained. Uh, but in contrast, Epiphany, not so much. Uh, um, we, we don't have a team of developers working on Epiphany. Um, um, so it, it's community contributions. It's, it, it's students like Julian and Gabriel, who've done Google Summer of Code, and the Gallia sponsored uh, projects to uh, improve it a bit. And it's contributors who appear and do random stuff like Cedric. Uh, 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 so that's uh, this last guy there. That's his IRC nickname, um, who added the new search engine preferences. Uh, but but there's, there's no one really working on it full-time, and that's a shame. And so uh, wh why is that? We have such a core, central, uh, w what could be more important to the, the, our desktop environment, to our computer, than the web browser? Uh, but we have fewer contributors than other uh, GNOME software. Um, I mean, not, not like the, well, we have fewer contributors than GNOME software as an application, but also other GNOME software applications. Oh, that's really confusing. We have an application called GNOME Software, which, where you install software. That's, 
but I, I'm, in general, uh, we, we have very few contributors working on the web browser. And so w why is that? It's because it's because it's not installed by default on, on any major platforms, right? If you're not using the software, why would you contribute to it? If Firefox is installed by default, why are you going to go out of your way to install a uh, smaller web browser with fewer contributors, with, mis with, with worse website compatibility. Um, so the main source of users right now is elementary OS, I think. Again, no statistics, but that's what I, that's what I believe. Uh, it's, uh, it, which is great, but it, it's, it's not a, they don't have a, as strong a, it's not as technical an audience uh, as an operating system like Fedora, where most of the users are uh, computer programmers. So we're not going to get as many contributors from elementary OS. Um, so that's a shame. It would be so nice to have more people helping to improve the web browser. But um, well, we're, we're, still, we're still making some good strides. So, uh, Firefox sync support is one of the two big features. When we ask people why don't they use Epiphany, the two answers we normally get are no sync support and no support for extensions. And so now we fix one of those two problems. So that's great. Again, Gabriel, good job. OK, roadmap for the future. Uh, so uh, privacy is a priority. Uh, uh, one of the reasons, um, again, Firefox cares about privacy. They, they implement some privacy protecting features like, like Disconnect, but they can't really go into ad blocking, which is really needed for privacy, by the way. That's not optional. Um, like they can't, they can't do that. Um, Chrome, of course, will never do that because then they wouldn't make any money anymore. Uh, so we can compete there. We, we can enable privacy features out of the box where they do, do not break websites. Um, so uh, finish HTTPS Everywhere support. This is a quick and easy one because it's almost already done. Uh, we just need to take some time to fix the remaining problems in the code and then get that enabled for users. Um, uh, Grinhold is IRC Nick. Daniel Brendel, I don't know if he's here. He was at Guadag last year. He did most of the work on this, so that was great. Privacy Badger, this is another frequent request. I don't know if anyone uses the ESF Privacy Badger extension. Uh, so I've been hesitant to um, implement a Privacy Badger feature in Epiphany simply because uh, ESF Privacy Badger breaks websites. We can't enable that by default. Uh, is it really useful to have a feature if we can't enable it by default? Well, well guess what? Uh, uh, um, remember when I said Google makes all of its money from advertising? Uh, so there's, a, there's some software development company out there, uh, you might have heard of them, it's called Apple, that doesn't like Google very much. And it controls the web browser uh, Safari, right? Um, so they don't like Google very much. So Apple has been uh, focused on ad blocking recently, privacy projection, just to make Google's life harder. Uh, so they've been working on the version of Privacy Badger uh, that I suspect, I don't know for sure, but I suspect it's going to be enabled by default in future versions of Safari. Uh, they've done all the hard work for us. They, do, they don't call it Privacy Badger. They call it Resource Load Statistics, but it, it tracks which, uh, what's, where, uh, which resources are showing up on multiple websites and then starts blocking them when it suspects uh, it's tracking you. Uh, so, um, so that's cool. Again, that's mostly done. We just need to take some time to hook it up and get it working in Epiphany. Uh, thanks, Apple. Uh, Google Safe Browsing. Okay, I, I've been um, uh, not so kind to Google recently, but they do have this awesome privacy protecting feature, um, uh, where uh, which uh, you, uh, your browser downloads a <laughs> list of hashes of malicious URLs, hashes the URL, checks it against the list. URL prefixes actually. Then if it matches a prefix then uh, you send the full hash to Google and it checks if, it, if it's on the list. So, so, um, so I, know, and I know it sounds creepy for your browser to be making connections to Google servers in the background, but actually uh, they did think about the privacy implications of this, and so that will um, help us avoid known malicious websites. We need to hook that up. Um, uh, that's another quick and easy win. We need lots of improvements in the TLS stack, uh, although this one is not something that uh, uh, we need to community contributors to help with. Uh, Agalia will take care of the TLS improvements because our customers need uh, um, n uh, that, that affects the entire platform, right? Um, making sure the TLS implementation is secure. Uh, other to-do items, uh, I'm not going to talk about each of these individually, but uh, 
if you see something you're interested in, we need to use interface for ad block config, filter configuration. Uh, Christian, who's not here, has been working on a dazzling address bar drop down because our current one doesn't look that great. Um, I think Bastian had some interest in a reading list feature. I do too. And Microsoft Edge has a really nice reading list. But it's a shame we don't have anything comparable. We lost PDF support with the switch to Wayland. Uh, so uh, in X11, the way of picking displays PDFs is by using a uh, plugin, that in the events browser plugin. But that can't ever work in Wayland. So, uh, so we lost that feature. We need a built-in PDF reader. Again, that, that should be pretty easy to do. We just have to integrate one of these existing libraries that already does the work. Uh, if you view source, we currently open in Epiphany because it turns out, and, and gedit because it turns out syntax highlighting is expensive. Web extension support, this is the big one. Uh, we've decided not to invest in web extension support because it's only really important for the web browser. It's not important for our customers. So we need a community contributor to help with that because uh, that's, uh, that's a, that's a uh, big project. Uh, but it would be nice to have some uh, Chrome and Firefox compatible extensions. All right, so this is the end of my talk. I have like two minutes for questions. Let's do. Oh, okay. All right. Half an hour break. So, does anybody have any questions? Oh, Alex. Okay. Uh, yes, please wait for the microphone to come to you if you have a question. Um, so, so first of all, thanks, thanks for your work on uh, web. web. I'm, I'm not a full-time full user, but I try, try to. to. Um, I would like to know if you can tell us about WebRTC support. WebRTC support is coming because our customers need that. I don't have a timeline for that, but it's coming. Apple's been working on that, too. Uh, so it will be showing up in Safari uh, shortly. I don't, again, I don't have a timeline because Apple never gets timelines. But um, so, so the, the problem with WebRTC is since it's a multimedia backend, uh, most of the, only half of the work is cross-platform work that we share with Apple. So the other half of the work, we have to go in and implement that ourselves for, uh, for uh, WebKit GDK. Uh, but but that, is, uh, that, is, uh, that is, that's, that's coming. Uh, we don't require any community help for that. We'll, that, will, that will come. OK, thanks. Thank you, David, for running up and down the stairs. All right, I confess I've never used Keyboard. So I'll just never do before I go to the page. No information telling you how to use it. No information telling you how to use it. Yes, there is absolutely, absolutely no download information, right? Yeah, I know we need to fix that. Um, so um, because in Linux, you normally you don't like download. Well, we could put like a flat pack download in there, right? Uh, great. Uh, so, so in the meantime, you could put, like download this disparate package to install it. Yeah, that's the, that's a big missing, <laughs> big missing point. Well, so I, I put together the current web page um, in a rush uh, a couple months ago, and I, I, it looks all professional and nice until you get. To, by the way. I, I forget who worked on the template for the wiki pages, but that wasn't that wasn't me. That was Pascal Nilso. and maybe Tom. Oh yeah, that's right. Thank them if you see them because it, it looks wonderful. But but yeah, at the very bottom, that's, there needs to be like some download information there. So uh, so I have a pending to do item to look into the flat pack support because the last time I tried to do any flat pack, it's not maintained by us. So um, it had some issues. So I, I need to look into that and put that, make sure that's good, and then keep it up. Regarding packaging, uh, hmm? as a flat pack, uh, are you aware of any features that are currently in the flat pack? OK. Um, am I aware of any features that are currently incompatible? So last time I tried it, YouTube didn't work. Does, any, does anyone care about YouTube? <laughs> um, yeah, we had some, there's some bug in some GStreamer plugin back in there, something that broke all of GStreamer. So um, we'll need to look into that situation. Uh, did, so, so that, did, are you aware of anything in particular? No, you're asking me, okay. Um, Security uh, feature to the story in the course of Google for 
uses So that is a major limitation of WebKit right now. So uh, we were uh, the second web browser on the next to implement uh, cross-platform, uh, sorry, um, cross-process. Uh, this web is a multi-process web browser. Each tab runs in its own process. So that's that's important because that allows us to sandbox the uh, web content process so it doesn't take over your computer when it's inevitably compromised by malicious web browser. Um, so Chrome was the first. They have an like, awesome sandbox. Uh, we need Firefox to that by about five years. Uh, Firefox is coming up behind there, but they're working on a sandbox too. We don't have one, in the me. so that, that kind of defeats the purpose of having the, I mean, it's still more robust, but it's not more secure. So are there plans to sandbox the uh, secondary process hazy? And the answer is hazy. Um, I made an attempt at this a couple years ago using stock.com filters, and I just determined that it's just not uh, practical. It wasn't practical using that technology at the time. Nowadays, we have bubble wrap. Um, so uh, one idea is to look into that, see if we can use that to sandbox the security processes. Um, the other hope is that by running the whole thing in a flat pack, uh, we gain that bubble wrap and sandbox for free. Um, so it's, but, um, so sort of. <laughs> we, we definitely need it. Definitely. Uh, but so so that's a disadvantage now compared to Chrome, not compared to Firefox. Firefox is not there yet. Another question: Is there any plan to support the VR and plug it? Because I I know I know it's ideologically it's not a nice thing to support. Plugins like MPEG High Flash. Yeah. I don't like the one that, for example, Netflix is using. Okay. So okay. So uh, encrypted media extensions. Um. Yes and no. We we are implementing support in WebKit for Kubernetes, which is encrypted media. It, it's the stack version that no websites are ever actually going to use. Um, unfortunately, uh, there are some proprietary dependencies. Uh, so uh, we we uh, so the answer is sort of we we have support for Netflix for customers, but we don't have that in upstream of kit because it's not really clear how it could ever be used. Um, so nothing like I know that Firefox downloads it from somewhere. Right. Um, I'm not familiar with the legal issues involved there. I think they have to get a license for that. Uh, so um, so the answer is no plans at this time. Uh, but it's I think it's a legal concern rather than a technical constraint. The code exists. The code exists. It's just not in the open source repository. Anyone else has a question? No question. Oh, boy. <laughs> um, I think that one of the main reasons why uh, it's so difficult to hack on Epiphany. I've, I've attempted it. I, I mean, you've seen a number. It's of, easy. You've seen a number of patches. Um, I think that the, working on Epiphany itself is is pretty straightforward. It's a fairly small to mid-size uh, C uh, GTK project, and and I think that anybody familiar with working on on GTK or GA or you know that that whole stack is not going to have problems finding it. His way around uh, around Epiphany. The main problem is whenever the whenever there is something that needs doing or needs double checking in WebKit, and that's where the that's where you get the, the biggest problem. It's it's you need to uh, well, most contributors like myself are gonna treat it as a complete black box, and I'm not gonna. I, I we don't even know where to start to see why something behaves the way it does. It's uh, I think that's going to be the main problem with contributions to uh, to good and web is having to work with WebKit. And I mean, it's, I can't imagine that it's pretty much the same reason why uh, an awful lot of uh, open source contributors don't hack routinely on, on Firefox itself. It's also a huge project. Uh, 
here at this epiphany, the, the UI side is a lot easier to deal with. Uh, I'll, tell you, I'll tell you what's the question. I don't really have a question. It's, you don't uh, have a question. I'm, I'm just well, saying. I mean, you're implying the question. Uh, what can we do to make this easier? Yeah. Uh, so first of all, hacking on WebKit is way easier than hacking on Firefox. I promise. Um, but yeah, it's a, it's, it's a challenge. If, uh, um, I mean, it's a huge project. Um, just getting a build environment set up with WebKit is a challenge. So um, I, th I don't have a solution for that. I've got instructions on the wiki, and they work, but they, they require you to use JH build, um, which, is, which is itself rather iffy. Um, so maybe we can do something better with build stream. Uh, that remains to be seen. Um, as far as actually diving into WebKit code when there's a problem in WebKit code, that's something that fundamentally, uh, I mean, that's gonna, that problem is gonna exist any browser, uh, any large project like LibreOffice's problem. Um, uh, fundamentally, there's nothing to do besides dive in, add some printouts to try to find out what's going wrong. If you have truly no clue where to start, ask someone. Um, I mean, uh, WebKit IRC, a lot, a lot of times, a lot of times, if, you, if you've truly got no clue, then there's not much you can do. But uh, oftentimes, I can sort of find the right place to code after an hour. So heading for us, <laughs> see, see where I wind up. Um, but 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 uh, I, I want to emphasize here that um, while it would be awesome to have more contributors to WebKit, uh, I, I think we're maintaining WebKit pretty well. Uh, I think we're doing a decent job of uh, uh, fixing the bugs that pop up. So what we, we really need more help is on the UI side of things, the easy side of things that fit in the UI process, which is not that much code. That's accessible to any experienced code contributor. It's accessible to new contributors as, as well, actually. Uh, anyone can help out there and make it, like so, some of these uh, low-hanging, some, some of these items, these are low-hanging fruit, right? Uh, uh, many people don't care about this. All right, um, you've used up most of the break time uh, so, uh, unless we have any further questions, I think it's time to cut it here. All right, thanks for coming, folks.